Hi everyone, our today's question is meeting rooms. This question is a part of a series of questions related to intervals which is currently being asked by a lot of companies including Amazon, Facebook, Google. So the question says given an array of meeting time intervals where intervals of i represents a start time and an end time start i and i determine if a person could attend all the meetings. So here you are given an array of intervals which include the start and the end time and we have to find out if this person will be able to attend all these meetings which means that no two meetings should be intersecting with each other otherwise the person can only be present in one of them and hence they would not be able to attend all the meetings. So that's the kind of output that is required. So before starting with the solution the one golden rule of thumb for all of these questions which relate intervals trying to find out some kind of an intersection or finding out a number. Um, you always have to think about how do I sort this given input. Either your input is already sorted on the start time or the end time, then you are good to go. Otherwise, in most cases, you do need to sort the intervals that are given to you. And there are two options always. One is being able to sort it on the start time and the other one is to sort it on the end time. So always uh, try to think of these two options and uh, in a lot of cases both of them would fit in so you can do either of them but there are going to be some questions where only one of them can give you the correct answer so it's really important to understand that and I have create a, created a playlist on all the interval questions if you want to go through them you would definitely get benefited by being able to understand what fits in where. So yeah, please do check out the playlist. Um, for this question's purpose, let's have a look. So we want to find out if the person will be able to attend all the meetings. So if I sort all the meetings on the starting time and I see that uh, a person has a meeting, for example, in this given input, a person has a meeting starting at zero, which is okay, which ends at 30. And my next meeting starts at 5. So if 5 is intersecting with the 0 and 30 slot, so I am already in a meeting and 5 starts in between that, so I will not be able to attend this second meeting. And that's why I can say that uh, it's a false, right? Uh, if I talk about the next input, that is 2,4 and 7,10, and I sort it on the starting time, so this list should typically look like this. Yeah, uh, because this is now sorted on the starting time. So two comes first and seven comes the next. So two comma four represents one meeting and seven starts after the end of the first meeting. So I can very well go into the seven comma 10 meeting as well. And that's why I can say that I would be able to attend all the meetings. So, uh, if you see this, this perfectly works fine. Now, if you would have sorted this on the end time, in that case, this input would have still remained the same even after sorting on the end time because 4 is smaller than 10. But let's have a look at the first one. So that would that would have 5, 10 first, then 15, 20, and then 0, 3. Oh, sorry, 30. Yeah, right? Because 10, 20, 30. Okay, so 5, 10 is my first meeting. It's okay. 15, 20 does not intersect with the 5, 10 meeting. So I'm happy over there as well. And then I have 1, 30. So I would compare this with 20. And since it is lesser than 20, I would not have been able to attend this. And I would have been able to say that, yeah. I can still uh, not go to all the meetings and I would have returned a false. So here, as you can see, sorting on the start or the end time helps us get to the answer. Cool. So let's get started with the implementation. It's a really quick and easy one. Yeah. So I have this list of intervals. The question doesn't mention anything about it being sorted already. So I need to sort the input. Uh, of course, before that, there are some base conditions. If my intervals dot length is equal to zero, um, 
also if it's null so if in intervals sorry, intervals is equal to equal to null or its length is equals to zero I just return false or maybe a true because there are no meetings for me to attend so I can of course attend them all uh, now the next part is to be able to sort intervals so I'll oops, sorry I would use arrays dot sort over here so we have intervals for my you just write a new comparator this will accept integer intervals as an input and we need to now override the compare method Sorry. compare which will also get to integer array objects and since we want to sort it on the start time I will just return and it has to be ascending so I will just say return this that's it okay uh, right so now my intervals are sorted based on their start time what I just need to do now is to traverse all of them and find out if there is any interval which has a starting time that is lesser than the ending time of my previous meeting so it means that I do need something called previous okay uh, which will be intervals of zero and let me start from i equals to one i should be less than intervals dot length i plus plus yeah also let's okay fine so um i get my current equals to intervals of i and I check that if uh, the previous end time is greater than the current start time then it means that there is an overlap right uh, so if the current is starting at a time which is lesser than the time at which my previous meeting ended then I have an overlap and I can just return a false over here okay otherwise previous becomes current and I should be good to go and if I have reached here without having the need to return a false I can say that I don't have any overlap and I should just be able to return the true Cool. let's see if that works mm -hmm. okay. Okay. a lot of typos sorry Sounds good. So the time complexity of this particular solution would be because we are sorting all the intervals given in the list it would be O of n log n because that's what is required to sort it and for the space complexity we are not using any other data structure to store any of these uh, inputs or the output so we can just say that it's going to be O of 1. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. Keep coding.